<sighs> Hello, welcome back. I'm back. <laughs> I officially haven't posted a video in about six months, so I feel like this is about time where I talk about what's happened, where I've been, what's gone on. I think I'm gonna work backwards. So obviously, you know, the world ended, um, and we've all been in the middle of a just a big old lockdown. And the lockdowns have been hard, especially um, you know, back home. Because I, I moved out years ago, so I don't actually live at home anymore, so I haven't been able to visit them because it's, you know, the whole separate households thing um, where you have to, like, stay in your households. I mean, obviously I have continued m mixing with people because it was just my job um, and stuff, but just for the safety of home, I wasn't going back home. Uh, well, actually, everyone at home is um, ill and disabled and vulnerable, whereas I live this pretty much normal, unchanged life. I was probably a... a Oh, that's a really big, scary fly. I got one of these things. But it's all up in the ceiling in the corner, and I don't want to go and get it. Because, like, what if I just make things worse? By the way, do you like the room? It's cute. Oh, fuck's sake, fuck me. Before it dies, we're going to make it smell very pretty. Ew, 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 ew. God. Got it. I like heard it do a little buzz crack thing and then it saw it fall. You better be dead. Oh, that was a nice little icebreaker anyway. <laughs> Where was I anyway before I got interrupted by uh, nature? Basically, yeah, I haven't been able to go home because of the whole lockdown thing. And that's been really hard on, you know, everyone because we get on. More so my mum because, um, you know, everyone at home don't get out much, especially during this lockdown thing. And so um, me and my mum are really close and she hasn't been able to see me and you know there's just been lots of just I don't know just really appreciating her um presence I'm just trying to think what, what where I'm going with this but all I can think about is like back in um basically back in 2012 my mum got really ill and we had to we were told to say our goodbyes to her but I think we were told she's either going to get worse or she's going to stay the same she's not going to get better and then I think it happened in 2010 as well but my memory's so hazy I probably blocked it out but honestly I do remember um, the 2012 one I don't know I feel like that was kind of a traumatic thing going through having to say that and experience that and obviously I think ever since then she you know she did somehow recover both times everyone in my family has had like lots of like really big super bugs and stuff and got like really ill but then come back from it albeit debilitated but they come back and I think things like that really make me consider the mortality of people but especially you know my parents and especially my mum as she's the one I've been told like say your, your goodbyes to and I think it's kind of left some weird kind of trauma in a way I feel like my life is defined as before 2012 and after 2012 and it was I wasn't really like aware I didn't wake up I felt like I was you know sleepwalking until then ever since then I think my worst fear has been you know my mum dying and always constantly considering her mortality and you know making myself quite upset really thinking about things like that um but then I also feel like that was around the age as I was coming into myself more and becoming more of like a you know an actual person so I think a combination of those factors just mean I got really close to my mum um so it's been a bummer not being able to like go home and see her over like the lockdown I think the last time we had an argument was maybe 10 years ago maybe longer like you know my whole adult life like I've argued with everyone else in the family but not her there's just that that closeness that relationship and it just sucks that then i'm not we're not able to have that because of a, a lockdown because of a pandemic and the bad management of you know everything in this country um the it's been a complete shambles but then in october uh she got really ill so able to come home again and actually see her so that was it was nice um ups and downs of being like ill and not ill so there's that and then also, I had a new job. I still have my job at the bar and the club, but this is um, a new job, um, which I will go more into in a bit. Which basically, it was working in a call centre, which, to be fair, I was pretty good at. So then I had to balance my time between, um, you know, working this full-time, nine-to-five job for most of the week, and then any kind of time I'd get a day off or a night off. Um, after work to see me family and attend to you know uh, my ill mum and helping out around the house because I'm just like able 
more able to do things like that. And I've just been really busy and I've not been able to do a lot of things that I enjoy or, um, you know, any of my hobbies or even, you know, keeping up with the YouTube and the drag and all of that. So, all of those considered and then obviously um, everything else I've just said. Um, my mum did die a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's been really hard and I think that's the main reason I want to make this video is to talk about it um, because I personally found a lot of help in other people who had gone through similar things. It really helped me with kind of knowing what to expect to feel. I have not really experienced much like grief in my life. Um, we have a very, very small family. Literally there's four of us that live in the house. I don't have grandparents or cousins or anything like that. I don't know what that's like, which is fine. I'm, I'm not like sad about it. I'm not like missing out because again, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what I'm missing. Um, you know, even my sibling, we are twins. So it's not, so it's not even like I experienced the, the older, younger dynamic at all. It's literally just like two and then the parents. It's just four of us. But I would definitely say I was very close with my mum and one of the closest I think relationships someone can have with their mum. We got each other, we understood each other and liked each other and just bonded. We had just this bond, we could just spend ages doing anything. Um, and you know, and she was like my favourite person. She was my motivation for doing um, most things. She was my my reason to be successful was because I always wanted to, you know, help my mum um, and give her a better life. So losing that left me feeling really weird and like kind of um surprised by the feelings like I just didn't expect it to feel like this um everything felt like a nightmare I don't know if you really get that but you know that feeling when you're having like a nightmare like a bad dream and things are really bad and you just think I, I need to get out of this I need this to not be real I need to just get over it and then you have like a last resort kind of reminder like oh wait there is one thing I can do I can always force myself to wake up and then you wake up and you're like, oh, thank God that wasn't real. So obviously I had that feeling. This, I've tried so hard to wake up um, and it, it's not happening. Like that feeling when you wake up from a nightmare and you think, oh, thank God it's not real. I get the reverse feeling now. You'd wake up and forget almost and you'd be like, oh, I'm normal. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. And uh, it was, sometimes it wouldn't even happen when I was asleep. Um, it happens just throughout the day. It was weird. It comes in waves. By like the minute it like it like hits you, I'll just be there, and then it just like hits you. I can like oh, you can almost feel it, and you're just like oh wow, and it's like what, and it's like it's just I, it just hit me again, and then you get distracted for a few seconds or a few minutes, and then it hits you again, and you're like whoa, and then like the waves definitely space out, and then some are bigger than others. Um, some of the hits have been really bad, especially in the early days. I I'd, I'd be doing fine, and then I'd see one little thing like I don't know it was either it was a, a cute note in the kitchen or just some of her stuff and it just like really upset me and like ruined me and then I'd get it out my system and then I'd be fine again and then it'd be fine and then I'd be getting on with stuff but then the littlest things would then like set me off again it was pretty sudden and unexpected there was still you know there was still so much to do she still had her phone plugged in on charge she still had like a, a glass of water by her table there was still money in her purse, you know, there's still things in her room that she hasn't put away, to-do lists that she had to do, like, it was so unexpected and you just, I didn't expect this. You think when someone goes that they've, you know, all their business is done and that they're, that's it, they're, that they've took it all with them or something, but no, there's still so much of her around. And then that's not even considering the more, like, the logistical, the financial side of it all, whereas, you know, when she is the one who is bringing in income for, you know, multiple reasons, and then she can't now, or she was the one who dealt with the money and the finances and the, you know, insurance and the rent and the banking and all of that, and it's all just gone with her. One of the most striking things I think with me was almost how how boring grief is. Like it can be dramatic as well but at the same time it's also so slow and quiet. Going to the hospital, the journey to the hospital, waiting in the hospital and then waiting and then this happening after and then it all happens and it's just there and you think it's gonna be some dramatic moments but it's not and it feels just like a normal day. It was still a normal day so you know wake up in my bed and then you know I look at my phone maybe watch a few YouTube videos um, have some breakfast or whatever I want to eat it all just feels like a normal day but then that happens and you're like that happened today 
you know, you think like what clothes you're wearing, I, I know exactly what outfit I was wearing that day. And that was the thing as well, was really striking, was how mundane of a day it was to so many people, it was such a normal day. I remember um, after it happened, going back home because I had to pick up some stuff, and just being on the train and everyone's just going about their day as normal, and I'm just sat there like thinking my mum just died a matter of hours ago. Even like, being in a supermarket um, and all the, the music's on, and it just felt wrong. Not that I'm saying they should accommodate to how I'm feeling and be like really depressing and quiet. That's it's life it does just move and go on. But you know, it's just walking around and everyone's like laughing and smiling and and the everything's so bright. That's what I remember is everything was so bright and normal and and loud and and happy. And I'm just like walking through it, isolated from it all, kind of going through this own personal hell went to see her body and then I would keep seeing her just, you know, breathing or w open her eyes and then kind of get up or, you know, I'd, I'd sometimes just picture her. Like, imagine, it's like daydreaming but like really intensely. You know when you look at something and you imagine it doing something but you're still looking at it and it's not doing that thing. It's it's just, it's still, it's it's still, still. I personally got into like a, a kind of dazed kind of, um, well, we've got to fix everything then. I remember I was sat with her alone and in the hospital with her body. Um, and I went into this kind of like, okay, well, I've got to make her look nice. And like, I wasn't even focusing on like how I was feeling or, or, you know, what I'd lost. I was just kind of like, I need to brush her hair. I need to make her face look nice. What, what, is she got something on her lips? I need to make her lips look nice. Do I have anything in my pockets? Do I have anything in my bag? What makeup do I have? Should I really touch her with my makeup? I don't know if that's weird or not. I think she'd want me to. I'll put some like a little bit of lip gloss on her or something. Just, just need to make her lips look a bit more hydrated. Is it too much? Now her lips look like, like, like hydrated. She looks alive. That's look, it looks really weird. Should she look alive? Is that, have I done bad to make her look alive? Should I, and should I carry on just brushing her hair? I can hide her mouth with her hair. Maybe I can, I can brush, push her hair over her face. I'll make her look nicer. Am I hurting her? Like, can she feel this at all when I am brushing her hair? Um, does she... <laughs> it's all these little things, and it's just like, I'm just like, just focused, I just had to do it. Um, it was horrible. Uh, heads are so heavy when you have to hold them. Um, There's like two sides of it, I think they're upset, and there's obviously, there's the horrible side, there's, you know, there's the horror of death, she's died, um, who knows what she was going through when it happened, um, and then there's also the side of, uh, just, just um, removed from that, just generally, I just miss her, um, Like, I don't know, I view them as like almost separate things. Like, on one hand, I'm sad because, oh, I'm sad because she's died, and I'm sad that she's gone through horrible whatever she's gone through. And then I'm also sad because I just, any regardless of any of that, I just miss her. And I just want to talk to her again, and just, you know, give her a hug. Um, and just, just tell her nice things, cheer her up. And it's like, I can't, uh, I won't be able to, and I just can't process that. Um, I wish I'd have known, like, the last time I hooked it would have been the last time. Um, I just didn't know. And uh, I just really miss her because um, she was so nice and so cute and so silly and so funny and cheeky and real and... I know everyone has, like, nice things to say about someone whenever they die, um, but she was just really good. And everyone who, anyone who knows me knows, like, how much I look up to my mum and like my mum and speak highly of her. Um, I would like to talk more about, I think, death and grief. I just think it's helpful and I want to help people. And it's a really weird feeling, I guess, is that the whole misery loves company thing? I don't know, but I guess knowing you're not alone and things... Is helpful. I've had a lot of people reach out since it's happened, and I mean so many. And if any of you are watching this, thank you so much. Um, I, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and in person, so many people have been so nice. I mean, literally hundreds of messages so far, 
um, and of support and and friendliness and but then people who go all the way to like sending me messages is nice and then sending like these really long thought out things is so nice especially people who've been through the same thing people telling me like um this is normal it's gonna hurt it's gonna feel bad and horrible but the i remember one thing that really stuck with me was someone telling me that the, the despair that you feel now it will go away and what you're feeling now will slowly get replaced with um just feelings of love and fondness and happiness for who you've lost um and i'm looking forward to that because that and that despair feeling is going um because it has been a couple weeks now but i do remember that feeling because like i said before this was my worst fear and usually you're like afraid because the thing that you're scared of is is happening and you're you're scared and anxious in case it happens which we were for like the lead up to it like a couple days or so but now that the the scary thing has happened what is what is there to be scared of now um that's what, what i was the most scared of and it's happened it's done so what are you meant to feel like post fear it's just this weird some would say like maybe a relief but to me it just felt like a, a despair like a horror at whatever happens when the worst thing you're fearing comes true that fear you're no longer anxious or scared of it happening you're scared because it is happening it has happened and it's just a constant nightmarish despair and it's it's so weird and that is how it felt for a while and it still does at times i can still feel it there but it is going away i wouldn't say i feel any sort of relief right now and maybe a little bit since the funeral because it was really nice where she said something very poignant which was that um grief is just love with nowhere to go and i completely understand how that feels because i'm you know so full of love for my mum, and obviously now i can't give it to her in as many ways so i remember having one phone conversation with her when she was really ill telling her how i felt and you know she was quite surprised to know how highly i thought of her um i just was feeling really honest and open and i just wanted to be like no i i always thought you like this i always felt like this about you i always you know i think you're cool i tell my friends you're cool my friends think you're cool and she was really pleased to hear it all and i'm so glad i got to have that conversation with her so i just hope me saying all of this kind of rings true to anyone who is lucky enough to still have their mum, and if their mum loves them, or if you love your mum, or hopefully you both love each other. I know some mums out there can be terrible, so I'm not talking about them. And honestly, I, it's horrible that some horrible mums get to be out there while one as amazing as mine has had to go. You know, I, I would like to encourage people to to try and do more with their mums, and I know it's hard to... You hear it all the time from other people, they say, I wish I'd done more, and you, you just think that's not going to... Um, be relevant to me, that's not going to occur to me. I'll wait till my time, and I always would think the same thing. And for about the last eight, nine years, I have always had these thoughts every single day of her dying. And just all of these things I've been thinking about, and yet none of them are like how it actually has happened or turned out. It, none of it is how I anticipated it. And I've thought about this a lot, but I always thought, oh, that's really sad. And then I get really upset about it, thinking about, oh, I'll be so sad if that happened. Luckily, it's not happened, so then I don't end up needing to talk to my mum about it. And now it has happened, and I kind of just wished... You know when you get, when when you feel compelled, you're like, oh, I really want to tell my mum I love her, or something like that. But then you don't, because you don't want to seem like weird, or out of the blue. Um, I, I really wish I'd done that more, because now I can't, now it, she's gone. If it hasn't happened to you, what if it did? If she was gone, and you, you know, suddenly, and you hadn't been able to say anything, and I mean really, like, try and think about it, and then whatever you would say, say it. Because I wish I did, and I wish I could. And I I said a lot of good stuff. We got on, and I still feel full of regret. But I'm, it's, it's slowly changing. I feel very thankful as well. I'm filled with, like, mostly two feelings, which is mostly just thank you, and I'm sorry. So that's been a lot, and that's been what I've been going through, and that's, I feel like, a crucial update that I need to get out of the way before business as usual. Obviously, I am since no longer working at the call centre job. Um, I was there for a good few months, like four, five months or something. Um, in my personal and very humble opinion, I was smashing it. I was um, an agent for Iceland. They ended up pulling out because whatever. I mean, they were nice at the time, but then they just kind of pulled out and just like, everyone just like didn't have their jobs. I still did. I still had the option for like a job and it was like, I could have moved on to another campaign, but 
it was just as this was happening. So at this moment in time, not really feeling like working again full time. It's just annoying because my mum would always tell me how proud she was that I had this job during the pandemic. She was like, I'm so proud of you anyway. But then I'm also proud of you for getting a job in the middle of a pandemic. But then at the same time, I also wished I could have seen her more. But then the reason I couldn't was because I was always working so much. But then she was also proud of me for having this job. Either way, I don't have the job anymore and it just feels a bit crap. I'm happy to be staying at home with much less money. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still getting, you know, I'm still on furlough for my nightclub job, uh, working at Heaven. And hopefully you'll be able to see me posting loads of looks and stuff and updates from there when that gets started again. So I'm just chilling out for now. I'm having a lot of time to myself. I'm spending a lot of time with my family. But also a lot of time with my um, new boyfriend, um, which is a new update <laughs> as well. So I'll, I'm quite busy these days because of that. But um, I think he's been one thing that's also really helpful for this whole thing. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's just cringy. And, but got a boyfriend. He's very, very cute. He's very attractive. He's very nice. And he's been really good. And that's really helpful. And that's been really a nice thing during this whole thing. Especially after the last year or so, where I've had so much trouble with boys. Boys have been rubbish. All of them. Every single one of them. Have, in some way, just disappointed me. So. It's nice to have one that's like a good egg. I'm trying to think if I've got any other updates. It's been quite a year. I remember it was about a year ago I posted my um my updates of how the last year had been. And I remember talking about 2020 and being like, 2020 has been terrible. Um, This is before the lockdown, I think, even kind of. Or, the, or just before it. And it was like I'd been like hacked, hijacked, banned off multiple things. My YouTube channel got stolen. It was a whole drama. It was a whole thing. And I remember at the time being like, this has been the worst. What an ordeal. And now fast forward a year. And I still can't seem to get a break. Things just get worse and worse. It does seem like I must have used up all my bad luck now. So, I can't see things getting much worse from here. So on the plus side, we only move up. I do have a lot of videos to edit that I can post again, but I just didn't want to post them after being gone for so long. Also, I feel like I look different. I've got this amount of daily makeup. It's nice. It's not drag. I'll be getting back on the drag thing. Unless you want to see how I do this. Also, my hair is longer. It was so much longer. I'll put in some, like, clips or something of how long it was. It was so long. But it was just looking, like, thin, because I put layers in. So I've cut it all to just one length now. I'm thinking of getting a bob. I can't decide if I want, like, a like a bob or not. Oh, I started electrolysis today. I'm not meant to be wearing makeup because of it, but if you can zoom into my chin... See how bumpy it is? started that today. Your first session's only half an hour because I need to figure out how your skin works to it and then after that it's every hour. It's expensive, it's painful, but it's permanent. And so I started that on my chin today. Um, literally a matter of hours ago I just got back. So it's not at its worst yet. It's going to be worse tomorrow and maybe the day after. Thank God we're drawing a time where face masks are a thing because I'm going to be wearing mine a lot. That was that was a nice development. Hopefully I can give progress updates on that when it's all done because like I got very self-conscious without makeup on, especially this area here. I've got so much like foundation and color correct on and I still think it looks like there's something there. I just constantly feel like I look like I have a moustache. I can't get laser either because I'm blonde, so we're stuck with this. I hope I come back soon. I've got so many videos filmed. Fun videos, collaborative videos, um, makeup videos, reviews. I've got some more reviews I need to film. I've got some new boobs to try out. And some extensions I think I need to try out as well. I do think that's everything for now. Um, but I just thought I'd give an update on me and how it's been going. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. It'd be really nice to kind of have a little conversation about this kind of thing. Especially if you're someone who has also experienced kind of grief in any way. Um, I don't want to make you talk about these kind of things, but I think it's helpful to talk. So if you want to say something, feel free to kind of put in your two pence and um, let me know how, how it's going. And I hope we're all okay. Um, I'll, I'll ignore most of the whole like the video spiel, um, but if you're interested, you can subscribe. That's a really helpful thing. I will be back and watch all my other videos to keep up with where, who I am and what I've been doing and then stay tuned for future videos because there's going to be more 
And in the meantime, you can also check me out on social media and everything. Um, there's a lot of that. Instagram is a good one. I'm going to start posting there again. Otherwise, keep up with me on Facebook. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. Alright. Thank you for watching then. Bye, and hope you have a nice day.